Do you believe that you can manifest more money inside your business? Do you believe that, you know, manifesting money is actually possible? Well, today on the podcast, we aren't talking necessarily about manifesting more money inside your business, but we are going to talk about your money mindset and how much of a huge role that can actually play in your success or not so success in your business. I've got a great guest and I know that you're going to love this episode. Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media, and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Hey there, podcast family. Welcome to episode 58 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you, as always, for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there and I sincerely appreciate you making little old me one of them. If you're a first time listener, then wow, welcome to you. Um, I'm Jen Donovan. I'm the host and I'm really happy that you've decided to join us here. It's my job via this podcast and my social media and literally everywhere else that I live, breathe and sleep to make your life a little bit simpler or more importantly, to make your business life a little bit simpler. Because business can be lonely, it can be hard, it can be a little bit complicated, it's rarely easy, but it should be simpler than what it is. So that's my commitment to you on the Small Business Made Simple podcast. One way I can help you make your life simpler other than you putting me inside your ears and listening to this podcast is by joining my group on Facebook called Like-Minded Business Owners. You can head to the show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 58 or of course you can just go to Facebook and type in Like-Minded Business Owners and join up. I would love to have you over there in the Like-Minded Business community. Today, as I mentioned in my intro, we are going to talk about money. I've got a few guests coming on in the next few weeks because it's not my area of expertise as much as I love figures. It's definitely not my area of expertise. So I've got a few guests coming on who are going to talk to us about some finances and money. So I'm really excited to get those out to you. But today, my guest is Claire Wood. She actually has her own podcast called The Claire Wood Podcast. Um, But she's coming to talk to us all about our money mindset. And I know this is a huge thing for myself and so many other business owners out there. The stories from our past and the stories that will actually become our future they all, the ones that involve money will really depend on our mindset around money. I was actually listening to Claire's podcast. Um, it was late last year and she was talking about just this thing about money mindset. So I thought, my gosh, this is awesome. So interesting. I need my audience to hear from Claire. So in true Jen fashion, I reached out to her in my DMs of Instagram, asked her to come on and clearly she said yes because she's on today. Claire's a qualified accountant turned business coach and she's got some fabulous insights for you around money. So I can't wait to share this episode with you. So let's welcome Claire to the podcast. Thank you so much, Claire, for coming on the podcast today. I am super excited for you to come and have a chat with my audience about money mindset issues issues and all around that as far as finance and business goes. But for those people who perhaps don't know much about Claire Wood, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your business? Yeah, sure. So I'm a business coach and I work with women entrepreneurs, um, mainly in the service space businesses. So in B2B, you know, like copywriters, graphic designers, branding people, I have a podcast called the Claire Wood Podcast. And um, I've also recently launched um, a program called the Money and Marketing Makers. And like you said, my big passion areas is really like, it sounds bad to say, but it's money, right? <laughs> it's, um, it's talking about money mindset, but also I'm really big. I'm actually a qualified accountant by trade. I'm a CPA. And so I'm also a big believer in teaching 
people about how to manage their money because I find these days everyone's all about the rah rah, the sales, the top line sales number, but no one's actually talking about what really counts, which is profit. So I'm really committed to teaching people about how to understand and manage the financials in their business as well. Yeah, look, and that's just, I haven't, um, I haven't touched much on the whole finance on the podcast this year. So I'm a little bit excited to dig down into money and a bit of money mindset. And I guess it was the whole money mindset. I was listening to one of your podcasts, which is the, the Claire Wood podcast, in case anyone's interested in looking that up. And I was really interested in some of the things you were talking about as far as our money mindset went, went because money is a bit of an icky sort of subject for even when I'm hanging around with my business besties and things like that, it's still really hard to talk about money. So where does that come from in us? Why don't we want to, uh, you know, tell people our figures and numbers and grow by helping just like anything else. If we talk about marketing, people have got ideas. Why is it not the same with money? Yeah, look, I think a lot of it comes into stories that we learn when we're growing up. Um, I grew up in a household that didn't have a lot of money and it was always rude to talk about money, right? Because you know, you just don't, it's something that you just don't talk about. And equally, a lot of very wealthy people don't talk about money because they don't want to seem like they're bragging. And, you know, in a country like Australia that we live in, um, there's this real tall poppy syndrome, right? Where hey, you don't want to be big noting yourself and saying, oh my gosh, guess how much I make. And I find myself, you know, I try and make a point about that make talking about money is, um, I want to normalize it. But even I find a lot of the time that sometimes it can come across as, as braggy or similarly, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I thought your business was so much bigger than that. Um, and, you know, as a coach, you know, to me, it's strange because I don't really... I don't know, like numbers on a page are just that. They're just sort of an energetic exchange, if that makes sense. Like sometimes I work with someone and I'm like, for example, this year I worked with my first million dollar client. And I was like, wow, you've got a million dollar turnover. Um, you know, I've got another client that's on track to achieve that sort of result probably within the next six to 12 months. Um, but Sometimes, you know, there can be people that look super impressive on social media and have massive followings. And then you go, wow, you're like struggling to get by here. So uh, I think removing um, a lot of the, I guess the energy around it um, is a great first step. But I have to say, look, I'm certainly not perfect here. It's something that I still feel really uncomfortable with because a lot of these messages that we grow up with, are, you know, get quite ingrained and and, you know, you don't want to make anyone feel bad. You know, like I'm quite lucky in my business and I don't want to make people feel crap about themselves if their business isn't, <laughs> isn't doing as well, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that it is such a controversial topic. But I, I love the fact that we're here talking about it. And I think that the more that we do talk about it and that people can share about their learnings, um, then the more that it can help everyone overall. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So if we did change our money mindset just a little bit and we did talk about it, um, you know, within the right people to chat to it about it, I guess, you know, it's not something to get advice from just anybody. But if we did kind of change that money mindset, do you think it would impact our business results dramatically? It's interesting. I this is the other thing. I honestly, I don't think so. Um, I could be, I could be wrong, but I think that what we need to do is get more open in sharing about, um, you know, the struggles and what works well for us. And that's why I like to share, you know, about my launches and, um, and, and about things that have worked well for me in business and not so well, because I think that ultimately it's about the strategies. Like I said, at the end of the day, the, the money is just an output. It's just an end result. And I certainly work to people that are doing very well financially in their business, but they're just, they're just cruising. <laughs> you know? Whereas um, I know some people that are super driven and are reinvesting a lot of money back into their business with a really, really big end goal in mind. So for me, money mindset isn't about necessarily tell me what your numbers are, but it's more about opening up conversations around money and removing a lot of the negative energy around talking about money, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, that totally makes sense. Thank you. Um, the podcast that I was listening to that kind of prompted me to ask you to come on and be a guest and talk about this was you, uh, you were talking about nailing your numbers. So what does nailing your numbers actually look like for a small business owner? Yeah, and this is one of my favorite objects because um as I sort of mentioned in the intro you know as a qualified accountant um I am a big believer in people really understanding what's going on in their business because I feel in the business world everyone talks about sales so it's always like I've got a six-figure business I've got a seven-figure business <laughs> but at the end of the day your sales number doesn't indicate how much money you actually make right people are like what because trust me, I know lots of people that are turning over several hundred thousand dollars. I had a client of mine that was turning over several hundred thousand and made an $8,000 profit a year. Mm -hmm. um, because as much as you might be earning a lot, if you're spending a lot, then you don't really get to keep anything at the end of the day. So that's why I'm a big believer in people understanding what the numbers mean. Understanding your profit is the amount that you actually get to keep after you pay all of your expenses. And of course, you've also got to pay tax in there. So to me, nailing your numbers is really about understanding your numbers. It's about making sure that you sit down and look at them and go, oh, okay, I know, I know what's going on here. And it's about making conscious decisions. So there's, you know, it's not necessarily about being conservative and not spending any money. It's just about being mindful with your money. It's about understanding them. And to me, that's what nailing your numbers is. Yeah. So to understand your numbers, uh, who are we looking at to help us understand our numbers? Is it, should we be having a bookkeeper, an accountant? Should we be doing courses? What is it? Who else do we need inside our business lives to help us nail our numbers? You can talk to your accountant about it. You can educate yourself online. You can read books. Um, I, I haven't read it, but I've heard there's a book called Profit, Profit First. It's meant to be um, a fantastic book about how to manage your financials. The one thing I guess that I just always caution people, I don't know if caution is the right word, bear in mind that everyone's going to have a different um, perception of what's right. So for example, in my past life, when I first launched my business, I came in with very much the accountant hat on, right? You you know, you don't spend much money. You just focus on profit <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And so I spent pretty much nothing. Like I, I went out, I got clients, I had virtually no overheads. Um, and the majority of my income was profit. The problem with that strategically, as I found out a couple of years in, you know, when I was looking at a couple of peers who started about the same time as me, was that they were all suddenly taking massive leaps ahead because they had been starting a podcast, <laughs> you know, <laughs> building a team, um, all of these different writing books. And, um, and that, I guess, had shot me a little bit in the foot because I'd been so conservative with my expenditure that I hadn't been reinvesting back into my business. So that's one thing that I would caution you is that whoever you talk to, just be conscious that everyone's going to have a different perspective on what that line is and what's appropriate. And I think it's different for everyone, right? So your accountant will probably err on, don't spend any money, your profit is this, just you know, put your head down. and I, I love whereas, that you changed the voice for the accountant. <laughs> that's an accountant. I can rag out accountants because I am one. Okay. Um, and, you know, sim on the flip side, like marketing people are like, what are you talking about? Like, you just, and this is my marketing voice now. Um, what are you talking about? You know, invest it all back in, like do this, pro you know, spend every single cent that you've got back in on marketing. So you just kind of need to be conscious of who you're talking to. Um, that different people are going to have different agendas, right? And what an appropriate amount. Like for me, I would love to be able to invest more, even more money back into my business. However, I need to be mindful. I've got a family that, you know, I need to provide for and I've got young kids <laughs> and we've got childcare costs and um, all of that stuff. So, you know, you need to kind of balance that out and be mindful that I guess, you know, you need to be, be realistic about what you can do as well. 
Yeah, I think that is such great advice. Um, I absolutely love that. Thanks, Claire, so much for sharing that with us. Um, we were speaking off mic uh, just before and you were talking about outsourcing. Is that where you flipped your switch to grow because you weren't spending much and then you outsource, which gave you time then to grow your business? Is that the, the mind switch that you went through? Um, yes, that's part of it. But I would say that what, the mindset switch that I did was I suddenly went, I really want to take this seriously about um, maybe a bit a year ago. And then I, that's when I really, really started to up level my business, up level my marketing. Um, I've done a podcast episode called how to triple your prices. And the reason why I did that podcast episode is because I did just that um, in less than a year, I tripled my prices as a result of up leveling my marketing. So I, as much as I, definitely outsource a lot in my business. I did it very mindfully. I didn't suddenly go, you know, here's a bunch of money and I'm going to go and hire all these people. It, it kind of happened as I grew my business. So I did it consciously. I did it mindfully and um, yeah, but it's definitely been a component because it's very tempting to do everything in your business, right? But if you're not operating in your zone of genius, like for me, my zone of genius is coaching people. It's sitting down one-on-one -on -one and it's really looking at their businesses and going, how can I help you achieve more amazing results in your business? So when I'm doing that, I'm doing my best work. Where I'm not doing my best work is editing my podcast or trying to design things. I'm Terror. I'm the worst visual person. So that it makes total sense for me to get someone else to do that and for me to concentrate on what I do best. But yeah. like I said, I didn't go and do it the other way. I mean, it, I, I did it as my demand grew, as I was getting busier. So yeah. Mm. Okay. Yep. And, and I guess that's the way that business should work, isn't it? When you get to that point and you can afford it, but you also know that, uh, you know, you can work longer in your zone of genius, then that's the time to be looking out to outsource things or you know, start building a team and that, as you said before. So um, we're heading into 2020 and there is just so much chatter. I don't know how many podcasts you listen to, but I listen to a few uh, reading blogs and things. And there's so much chatter about, you know, new year, new start, all that type of thing heading in I actually made the mistake of saying we were heading into a new decade apparently we're not apparently that's not till 2021 I was uh, told that but uh, what sort of tips and tricks do you have for someone who perhaps is you know really wanting to start 2020 with a bit of a bang with a bit of a difference in their business as far as you know their money or the money mindset goes yeah definitely look you know, this time of year, I get a bit of a, you know, I'm a coach and I get a bit, oh God, people are talking about this again, but <laughs> there's a reason, right? A new year is a perfect time to make a decision. Next year is going to be different to the last. It's a perfect time to set some new goals, to really commit to up level. And um, the way that I suggest to do that is to, first of all, get super clear about where you're heading to create a vision for where you want to take your business, then break it down into goals. What does that look like so it might look like launching a podcast or up leveling your socials or investing in a team member um and then i think the next thing to then do is create a budget because it's all well and good to go right that's it i'm hiring 10 people for my team people, <laughs> the accountant in me is screaming out please do it mindfully um this is how people go broke and bankrupt but make sure that you're conscious. How many clients do I need to have to be able to source that staff member? Um, my suggestion as well with growing a team, I personally, I don't have any people in my actual team on a permanent capacity. Everyone are all casuals. So I can up level, I can up level the hours in my team and I can downgrade it if my, you know, if business was to slow down. I'm not stuck in to a, you know, to a lot of heavy um, overheads. Um, so I can scale up or down as we require. And again, depending what size your business is at, if you're more established in your business and you've got a much more stable, um, secure uh, income stream, then fantastic, you know, go ahead and make that commitment. However, if you're sort of a solopreneur and your business comes and goes in waves, then um, having that flexibility is a great way to do it. Sorry, I got really off topic there. Once I get started, I can just ramble and ramble, can't I? Um, <laughs> the question, so what I was saying, set yourself a budget is the other big thing that I would say. Start of the new year, 
how much how much money am I going to make each month and what are my expenses going to be? Map it out over the whole 12 months. Work out what your profit's going to be. Work out how much tax you're going to have to pay. And going to the new year, really mindful about what it is that you're wanting to create in your new year. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of my favorite sayings is sort of start with the end in mind. So start with where, what you want it to look like and work backwards from there as far as, you know, budgets and marketing and that sort of thing goes as well. So yes, I love that little start with the end in mind. It served me well for many years. Um, beautiful. Any last um, parting words or anything that you would like to share with my audience that maybe we haven't covered today, Claire? Yeah, look, if you, um, we sort of touched on money mindset a bit. If you don't really understand what I was saying about like energy and about understanding your money mindset, I guess I just said you to really educate yourself in, in this space. Um, my biggest mentor in this space is Denise Duffield Thomas, and she's written a book called get rich lucky bitch um she also has a program um there are also heaps of other amazing entrepreneurs that do work in this space another one i love to follow on instagram is manifestation babe um kate northrup's written a book um there's you know so many different books that you can read there's people that you can follow just start to learn a little bit more about it and if you are skeptical if you're like how will i make more money by manifesting it it sounds like rubbish I get it because, um, you know, the conservative part of my brain thought the same thing. Just try it. And one thing I say to my clients all the time is, yep, totally get it. Why don't you do it to spite me? Do the work. <laughs> I say that <laughs> to my teenage work. children. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you might prove me wrong or whatever. Um, but I would say to, to do the work and see what flows, see what happens when you really start to create plans, when you start to visualize them, when you start to bring them into your reality, because I can say there's been incredible things happening in my life since I've done the work in this space. And anyone listening, I would really encourage you to do the same because I think the same can happen for you. Oh, beautiful. What a really great note to end on as well. Thank you. And thanks for sharing some of those resources as well. I'll have some links on, in the show notes to um, those people and to that um, book as well that people might like to look up. But uh, thank you so much, Claire, for coming on the podcast today. I, I found it really interesting. I hope you have too. And I certainly hope that my audience has got something from it as well. Um, heading into the new year, I think it's a perfect time for discussions like this. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Jen. Lovely to chat to you. No worries. Thanks, Claire. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. I know I did making it and it was really great to get to know Claire, uh, you know, offline as well as having that chat with her that you actually heard. It's always great to be making new podcast friends. And I have to say one of the episodes I will do this year is all the things that I have learned and discovered and what this podcast has actually given to me. And this is one of them, being able to make new friends over podcasts. It's just awesome. I really love the conversation. I hope you did too. And I'd really like to continue the conversation in the Facebook group, uh, Like-Minded Business Owners. I'd like to know how you are with your money mindset. Did anything that Claire said or we talked about, did that trigger anything for you? I'd really be interested to find out. It's such an interesting topic. It's something that I really want to delve more into uh, for myself and my own business. And this is just scraping the surface. That is all for episode 58. I will be back next Thursday, of course, with another great episode to help you simplify your business in 2020. If you're enjoying this podcast, can I ask you a little favor? or maybe two, you know, maybe you could subscribe to the podcast. I have some pretty exclusive content coming up for those who do. Or maybe you could share this with a friend, another superstar business owner who's really doing the daily grind and would appreciate someone making their business a little bit simpler. Or if you're in the love sharing mood, because February is the month of love, you could leave me a rating or even a review that would mean the world to me. 
I will, of course, see you on the podcast next week for episode 59. But in the meantime, let's hang out on social and get social on social. You'll find me on Instagram, Facebook, and my absolute favorite, LinkedIn. But whatever you do, remember, my small business peeps, as my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. Tell I can feel it, say it proud, be true and let us see you for the star that you are.